Hello, how are you? Welcome to Hot Tea with Holly. I am having a hot cup of tea and I am Holly. How are you? Today, I've got some really awesome stuff to share with you. I'm doing a very special segment today, which I'm super, super excited about. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I've done it kind of, sort of, but today we're really going to do it right. So today, this is what I call hot tea, hot seat coaching, and I'm going to be offering free coaching to some of the special women in my community who applied for one of these spots. So I've got, hopefully, if everybody shows up today, I've got three women that are going to join me here on the live feed. They've got incredible questions that I'm going to be sharing with you, and you're going to get to see how I coach them in real time. This is this is really what I love to do in my business, which is coach people. I think in terms of what I am good at, I am really good at pinpointing and identifying where you're struggling to create the body that you need to keep up with the life that you love. And so I thought it would be really cool to start to introduce this concept because a lot of times the questions that get brought to me from the women in my community are super common. So it's quite possible that you might actually have a similar question to one of the women that's going to be joining us today. And it'll just be really cool for you to hear how I guide them and how I help them to really start getting better results, whether it's from their strength training, workouts in general, or intentional nutrition. If you've landed here for the first time, welcome. I'm Holly Perkins. I help you use strength training and intentional nutrition to create the body that you need to keep up with the life that you love. In my 30-year experience, I now have come to learn that it's inevitable for every single one of us to hit a road bump in life. And sometimes those road bumps are large and sometimes they're just little speed bumps. But inevitably, every single one of us as women are going to hit a road bump in life. And what I know for certain is that if your physical body is strong and your spirit is stronger and your health is peak, you're going to be able to get through those seasons and those road bumps and those hurdles in life. And so today I'm going to be bringing three women in to join us for the conversation. I'm super excited. PD is going to be joining us first and I've got her in the studio. She'll be joining us in just a couple of minutes. PD, if you can hear me and see me, hello. Um, and if you're here watching me live, say hello in the comments. If you're watching this in playback, hello. I'm so glad that you are here. So a big question I get on a regular basis lately since spring of 2020 is a lot of women are making the transition to working out at home, just like I did last year. And I got to tell you, it's a rude awakening if you're someone who historically has always worked out in a public or commercial gym. Making that transition to working out at home is a different scenario. It's a very different environment. I feel for good and bad. There are pros and cons to it. One of the things I love the most about having my own fabulous home studio now is that I don't care what I'm wearing. I don't care if I don't look so great. I don't care if my underpants are showing in my yoga pants because there's no one here and I have ultimate privacy for my workouts. And I absolutely love that. I'm not self-conscious. I feel more confident in being creative in the gym. I also love the time efficiency of working out at home. You don't waste any minutes getting to the car and then driving to your gym and then having to find a parking spot and then checking in, then locking your bag in the lockers and then getting out to the cardio equipment only to find there's no cardio equipment available, right? So I love working out at home because it's the peak, the ultimate in time efficiency. And one of the things that I learned right away is that I don't push myself as much when I'm working out in the privacy of my own home. So I want to share one quick little insight with you before we jump into some live coaching with three women who are here with us today. And what I want to share with you today, if you are someone who does work out at home either all the time or part of the time, I just want to give you one key insight for now, because we're going to touch upon this when Petey joins us on camera. Um, 
So I just want to share one little piece of information that hopefully will be helpful for those of you working out at home. And if you work out at the gym, this is going to be helpful too. Here's the scoop. In order to really transform your body and get the body that you want, whatever that is by your standards, it's most likely going to require some change in your behavior. If you want to change where you are currently, it's going to require change in your behaviors. And when it comes to changing the body, a big part of that is really staying strong and focused on what your goal is so that you really ask of yourself to step up and take the action required to change your body. When it comes to building lean muscle mass or reducing your body fat and achieving a lower body weight on the scale, when it comes to those two things, you're going to have to confront some discomfort. Discomfort is really the key that you're moving into territory that you're going to change your body. When it comes to muscle building and increasing your lean muscle mass, you have to be challenging yourself in your workouts, whether your workouts are at home or at the gym. And what this means is that you have to be ensuring an intensity during your workout where it's actually challenging. And this is the mark that I see a lot of women um, uh, miss in terms of their workouts. Most women, in my experience of coaching women, most women aren't really pushing themselves quite hard enough to bring about that change. So one of the best tips that I can offer you to get us started today is to really become comfortable with your edge. What does it mean to really challenge yourself in your workouts? Now, it's important that you find the right edge because I don't want you to push yourself so hard that you get injured. I don't want you to push into such high intensity that you overtrain. And the majority of women that I have coached aren't pushing themselves quite enough. The rule of thumb here is that you really want to be pushing yourself about 20% harder than where you are today. And that is a bit of a subjective scale. It's a subjective rating. When you're in your workout, whether you're at the gym or at home, and you're performing an exercise at the end of every single set, I want you to ask yourself this. Could I have done more? And if the answer is mm, probably... That means you're not working hard enough. When you ask yourself the question, could I have done more on that set? The answer should be, whew, maybe, but I doubt it. Or if you're more experienced in your workouts, like I know some of my friends here are, the question becomes, could I have pushed myself a bit more? Absolutely not. That's the answer that we're looking for, because if you are um, getting to that point at the end of the workout or at the end of the set and you're like, mm, I guess I probably could have gone a little heavier or I could have pushed myself a little bit more. That is proof that you're not actually challenging yourself to the degree that you need to to bring about change. That's going to help you if you're working out at home and you're not getting the results that you want. It's also going to help you if you're working out at the gym and you wonder whether you're getting uh, the most effective or efficient workout. And if you're pushing yourself to the place where you're actually going to change and you'll know that you found your answer when your body starts to change, when you start to see the results that you want from your workout, then you know you've hit it on the money. Welcome. If you're here with me live, cheers. I am having a hot cup of tea, which is probably now a little lukewarm because I've been talking for a couple of minutes. But today I am drinking, thank you, my dear friend, Laura, 
We are drinking T Zanti. It's a new brand to me. This is the Fukumushi Sencha, which is a very special Sencha from a particular region in Japan. I'm a huge fan of Japanese teas. Sencha is always from Japan. You're not going to, I don't think you'll find a Sencha from China. I think Sencha tea is always from Japan. And this is a more premium Sencha. It's a more caffeinated special Sencha. And it is amazing. Laura, if you're here, thank you so much. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to warn you guys, it's caffeinated. So while I am talking with Petrina Petey here in a moment, don't be surprised if I get a little excited about today's conversation because that's what caffeine does for me. And that's one of the reasons why I love caffeine. It makes me very excited. So welcome. Are you having a hot beverage with me? What are you having? Are you drinking tea? If so, do share. If you've been here with me before live or in playback, you know I love to know what you're drinking. So please share. What I have found is that I've discovered some of my new favorite beverages because of the women in my community sharing what they're having. So if you're having something special, even if it's coffee or even if it's not a caffeinated beverage, I hope that you will share and let us know what your favorite is. So welcome. Let's jump in. I am so excited about today's segment. I'm going to be bring, bringing uh, Petrina in here in just a couple of seconds. And we're going to talk about a couple questions that she has in terms of her own training. I hope that you find this interesting. I hope you love this. And I think it's going to generate a really great conversation. And it might even bring up some questions for you. Now, if you're watching this on my blog, and it does bring up some questions for you, Come on over and send me an email, holly at hollyperkins.com, and I will do my best to answer your questions. And if you found me on YouTube, come on over to my website, hollyperkins.com forward slash offer, O-F-F-E-R. You can download a totally free, totally amazing, super premium six-week strength and cardio program it's a 14-page gorgeous free download that's going to walk you through a six-week progressive resistance program with the right cardio to complement it. You're going to get all of the exercises, video tutorials, the exact number of sets and reps and rest. This is one of the best free things that I offer the world. You can get it for real totally free, hollyperkins.com forward slash free offer. Let's jump in. So I am going to bring Petrina in with us. Petrina, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. So good to see you. you oh my here. God. It's so fun to have you here. How are you today? Good. I'm drinking strawberry hibiscus because you need something to temper that hibiscus right? <laughs> I agree, right? What uh, brand do you drink? Because that sounds delicious. You know, I don't even know. I was searching for something new when I was at Walmart. I don't know. Oh, perfect. Okay, know. so Walmart, so it's at a grocery store. I'm going to look for it. I wonder if it's, I know Walmart carries a lot of the Celestial Seasonings, which I love. I Celestial do Seasonings I peppermint tea is hands down my favorite peppermint tea, by the way. Um, I do. I do. Yeah. And I really love, um, I love, I like hibiscus if it's balanced with something. I don't like a pure hibiscus and it depends on how people are doing it. But what's really nice about the one that you're drinking is it's herbal. And so I know after my green today, I'm definitely going to need a little bit of herbal this afternoon. So welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Okay. So if I am correct, I've got some notes here. One of the questions that you were curious about, and I'm happy to talk to you about all of the issues around this topic, but um, correct me if I'm wrong. One of the questions is you feel like you're not sure if you're pushing yourself hard enough in your workouts. Now, am I right that you work out at home? Is that correct? I do. I've been actually doing that for years, even before the pandemic. And um I also worked out at a gym for years, so I've done both. And working out at home, I have the discipline. It's no problem. My daily workouts, I know when I should be doing 
the problem I think is sometimes you reach, I reach a point that it's just repetitive and I, I'm not sure, should I go up? Like if you're at a gym and you go there, um, and wait to say, there's some personal trainer around who could save you if it's too heavy, but at home, for instance, you had recommended using 20 pounds for an overhead press, and it's like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe someday, but how do I get to that point that I can really push it? Oh, such a good question, Petrina. You verbalized it so beautifully. And that is some, I, I really think that is like the crux of what we're talking about here, right? Is how do you know when it's safe to push yourself? How do I ultimately get to a harder place? And how do I know when that is right? I love this question. So if you're watching and um, right. you missed the episode in the blog post that Petrina just referenced, I shared a blog post. Sorry, we've got the sun coming in and I've got something in my eye at the same exact moment here. Bear with me. Um, so I think it was a few weeks ago, about three weeks ago here on Hot Tea with Holly Live, I did a segment yep. and this segment is now live on my blog over at hollyperkins.com. The blog is nine moves and nine weight loads that every single woman should be doing. And one of those exercise, it, exercises is an overhead press. And I gave my numbers for each of these exercises and the weight load I want you working up to. And on that dumbbell overhead press, I said 20 pounds. So Petrina's question today is perfect because she's like, well, but I don't think I can do 20 pounds right now. How do I know when to progress and how do I get there? So my first question for you, Petrina, is what is your current weight load on an overhead dumbbell shoulder press? I have been doing um, probably 12, depending on how strong I'm feeling. I, for a while, I was doing 15. And when you had suggested the 20, I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'm not going to try 20 right away, but I'll try the 15. And I was able to get about six. I was getting a little shaky. So I think I can do it. I just don't know at what point to go back to that again. Okay, so to answer, I'm going to answer this question for Petrina, but if you're watching and you're like, I want to know the answer to this question too, notice that the first question I asked her is what weight load is she currently doing? Now, if, if Petrina had said I'm doing five pounds, that's a big difference than where she is. 12 pounds. 12 pounds is closer to 20 than five, right? So it's always relative to where you are. Please know that because I'm going to coach Petrina here in a moment. But if you're only at five pounds, you've got to understand the concept and not get hooked on the number. So the next question for you, Petrina, is when you're doing these workouts at home, do you have a program that you're following and you know that on every single set, your goal is to try and get 15 reps or 10 reps or 12 reps. Do you have what's called a rep scheme that you're aiming for? I do. I do. And it, uh, don't always do 15. That's going to depend on how much time I have and whether I'm going to do two sets or three. But one thing I like to do is, um, and I fit the pyramid, I think where I'll start with 10, do, do 15, say, then go up to 12, do, do 12. When the time I get to 15, do 10, something like that. I'm not giving you exact numbers. And the other thing I like to do is, is the opposite, where I would start with the heavy one and go down, down, down. That one I, I like that. because, yeah, you could start with a higher weight and then just keep going down until you really get to a five pound, you can pump out 25. And I love those kind of workouts. But generally, I would say I do two or three sets of 10 to 15. Beautiful. And I love that. What, what you're referring to there is either an ascending or a descending um, rep pyramid scheme, which I love, right? So it's yeah. like either ascending with your reps or descending with your reps. 
because the reason I ask this is it really does matter how many reps you're doing. So if it's a set where you're doing 15 reps, chances are that's not going to be the set where you use your heaviest weight load, right? The more reps you do, the few, the less weight anyone is going to be able to do. So ultimately, here is my suggestion for you, Petey. When trying to increase your weight loads, you have to be conscientious of your rep scheme. In my experience of working with women, I really do believe, and there's a lot of research to support this, that building muscle will change your life. Hands down, that is legit for every single woman. Your life is going to be better if I can help you build your lean muscle mass and become stronger. For women, and in my experience, I know that lower reps make it better and more doable for most women to be able to increase their weight loads, to get those weight loads up. What I'm not saying, what I am saying is 15 reps, it's really hard to increase your, your weight loads, your strength at 15 reps. So when someone's goal, like PD's is today, is to increase their, their weight load so that they can achieve a certain thing, it's really critical that we start to look at the reps that you're doing. So the first thing I would recommend, PD, is when you are striving to increase your weight load, 10 reps. Now, if you can only do fewer reps, like you mentioned, like you pick up the 15 pounds, but you could only do six reps, let's say, that's okay right. too, if you're skilled, totally okay. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But specifically for the sets where your reps are 10, that's where you want to try your heavier weight loads. The way that you're going to know that it's safe or not is by incrementally increasing your weight loads. Upper body increases are generally somewhere between three and five pounds, depending on the exercise. So for an overhead press, I have found that to be perfectly true. It's generally safe to try a heavier weight load that's three to five pounds heavier than what you're currently doing comfortably. So if you guys remember, Petey shared she's doing 12 pounds and it's doable. And sometimes she can do a little heavier, but the 12 pounds is doable. So we know it's safe for her to try three to five pounds more for 10 reps, not 15, 10 reps. And you'll know that you've hit your perfect weight load when the last two reps of those 10 reps, you're struggling. You should be struggling on the last two reps. So if you've got eight perfect reps at 15 pounds, okay, 12 pounds plus three is 15. So we know PD is safely able to try 15 pounds for 10 reps. And if you get to number eight and then number nine is like, oh, I'm pushing. And then number 10 is, whoa, I'm moving slow. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know, I don't know, I did it. That is exactly what we're going for. That's the intensity that's gonna allow you to get stronger. That is that like holy grail for every single exercise. Upper body, as I said, you choose your weight loads where you're like, I can pretty comfortably do a dumbbell side raise, okay? And I can do that with five pounds. So I wonder if I can go heavier, three to five pounds heavier for 10 reps. And if those last two reps are a little sloppy and you're struggling, you hit the money on the head. Now, PD, specifically what you said is sometimes you would pick up a weight load and you would get to like eight and that was it. The question is, could you do those two more reps where you're struggling and I'm not wanting you to be like really sloppy, 
but kind right. of struggling, a little sloppy. Could you have gotten those two more reps? Would do you think, you know, what do you think about that? Do you know or you're not really sure? You with the 15 pounds? Yeah. 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 You know, I probably could have. I probably could have. I mean, I would want to make sure I kept the perfect form, but yeah, I probably could. Yeah. Exactly. And so see right there, that's the indication that you probably are safely able to do more because otherwise you would have said, oh my God, there's no way I could have done 15 pounds. But when you say, mm, I think I probably could have done more, we know that you can test out a little more for 10 reps. Now you're right. You want your technique, you want your technique to be perfect for all of the reps, except for the last two, but on the last two reps, it's okay if you lose your technique a little bit. I don't want you totally sloppy, obviously, right? But just a little bit of loss in your technique is what you need in order to expose your muscle to a heavier weight load so that it gets stronger, so that when you come back to the next workout, those 15 pound dumbbells are now easier. Okay. But you're right. I wouldn't want you to go from 12 pounds to 20 pounds. It will be right. It's going to be this like work in progress. You're going to do it over a period of time based on the for formula that we just talked about. And then maybe in a month or six weeks or two months, you're going to use that system of 10 reps and you're going to hit that 20 pound weight load for 10 reps. And that's when you start to explore, do I want to go heavy or not? You get to decide. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does. It does, especially the part of that, no, I'm probably going to be a little shaky. It's like when you're doing um, a tree pose in yoga. I mean, it's different, but you might be a little shaky because your muscles are trying to keep your balance. So isn't it the same? Yes, somewhat. 100%. Yeah. Yes, that's a great example. And you're absolutely right. The thing to remember is you're never going to be able to do a perfect tree pose until you get better at tree pose. Well, how do you get better at it? You have to expose your body to the stimulus for it to get better. It's the same exact thing. So you're wobbly and you're fighting against the wobble on tree pose and then you lose your balance and then you try again. It's this systemic progression of trying and then eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to do it. That's exactly how the body gets stronger, gets better, gets more fit, gets more mobile, all of these things. It's by systemically exposing yourself safely to something harder and knowing that when you get into that territory of harder, you're going to lose some of your technique, just like you might fall out of your tree pose. That has to happen until you can learn to hold it solidly. That's a really wonderful example. Good. Thank you. Really good question. Any other questions today? I think... Well, I mean, I could be here all day. No, I think that that's good. good. I appreciate that. I love it. So, and I'm so glad that you were here today. Thank you for joining me. Do keep me Thank posted. You for that. Okay, I let will. me know. Let me know how this progress goes for you. I'd love to follow up and please know and anyone watching and listening, I will be doing these what I call hot tea hot seat coaching segments probably once a month going forward. So Petey, if you want to come back and ask another question, you are always welcome to join us again. And for anybody who's watching this, I will give you the link to where you can apply, ask your questions, and then you might get selected to join us here. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you were here. It's awesome to have you in my community. I see you Thanks. comment and I see you around all the time. So I feel like I knew who you were, but now I really know who you are. So thank I you know. for being here. Thank you. So thank you. Fun. I'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. And next we've got Sheila. Hi. Good morning. 
How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you. I'm very excited. I just stumbled upon you a few weeks ago, rushed out, bought your book. I'm, I have your eight or nine now um, to do exercises and I'm busting my buns trying to get, you know, up to the weights that you said that I needed to be. I love it. Oh, yeah. that makes me so happy. It really does. Yeah. Um, I really am just so passionate about helping you, helping everyone. Um, if I could just sit here and do this all day with women around the world and help you get stronger and better, I would do it. So that just like makes my heart swell so much. I'm so Good. glad you're here. Good. How did you find me? I'm curious. How did you stumble Instagram. upon me? Okay. Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very cool. I, I scroll through lots of people and try to pick up tips and um, different things, different ideas. Um, and I, I just really connect with you. Um, you're a bit younger than I am, but you're not as young as most of the kids on Instagram. And I just like the solid foundation that you lay. It, it is the way to get it done. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. That makes me really happy. And, um, you know, for those of you guys that don't know, and Sheila, you may or may not know, but I feel like I crossed a really important, um, how should I say it? I said it last night differently. Like I earned a very new badge of honor just last month and I turned 50, which I, I can't believe. But I got to tell you guys, I am so darn proud that I have earned that badge of honor. And I just feel like I'm going to be able to help so many more women because I'm in my fifties now. I mean, it just makes me, it's odd, but it really makes me so happy. So I'm so glad that you're here. Thank um, you. Okay. So let's talk because I okay. loved what you shared in your application. And again, um, you can fill in the colors and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you shared that you've been working out. This is definitely something that you're committed to, but you're noticing that you're sore all the time. I am sore and all the yeah, time. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Tell me more. Okay. So I, um, during COVID, I started lifting and I was hiking a lot. Um, I had an injury in last June and I was unable to walk as much as I did. So I just started lifting weights and I have grown unbelievably. And I, I am so passionate about it. Picking up groceries, walking up the stairs with a 40 pound bag of dog food. It is amazing these the the way it affects my life, and I am absolutely thrilled. I'm so excited. Um, my problem is I have a lot of problems. Um, I am sore all the time. Um, this morning I was at the gym and I did chest, shoulders, um, and triceps, and I like I can just feel it already. <laughs> that I'm, I'm going to be sore. And so one of my biggest questions is, um, I work, I lift weights four days a week. Is that enough? The second question is, um, is it, am I supposed to be breaking it up into different areas of the body? So what I'm doing right now is one area, one area, and then I do legs two days. So is, I just don't know if I'm doing it right. Um, and then I don't know how to slow down. I don't know how to not push it to the point where I'm so sore. Okay. And when you say slow down, will you just give me a little more context to slow down? Does that mean actually move slower or does that mean slow your roll? Does it mean slow you're my roll? Okay. Not so it's more of an attitude. As hard as I can, because I'm, as I get stronger, I'm so excited and yeah. I just want to get stronger and, and stronger. And, and then I am sore all the time, all yeah. the time. Yeah. This is such a good question. And like, I love this question because I think there are probably many women watching us right now who are like me too. And I will tell you, this was me in my twenties. I was sore all the time. And that was the start of really coming to understand this concept around soreness. So thank you for this question. It's amazing. Let me ask you real quick. Um, are you creating your own strength training plan? Like I know Lift to Get Lean's got a four, uh, a four day program in there. The Radical Transformation is a four day, what we call split routine. How, are you making up your own routine or are you following someone's program? I am making up my own routine. I work out with my adult children one or two days a week and they help me. Okay. Um, but basically I'm on my own. Perfect. Okay. So let's answer your first question then. So when it comes down to Sheila's question was great, which is like how many days a week and 
should I be splitting up the body parts? Or she didn't say this, but a common question I get is, or should I be doing my full body all four of those days? This is where we get into the art and the science of programming. And while I certainly give a lot of resources for people to kind of program themselves, it's helpful if you just get somebody else to do it for you. And you, there's lots of free resources out there in the world. But it depends on a number of factors, what your goals are. We now know what Sheila's goal is. She wants to get stronger. She loves feeling stronger. It's not that you should be doing four days a week or you should be doing three days a week. Some of it really is what's the minimum effective dose and then what are your goals and how does your body recover best? A four day, what we call a four day split, meaning you're splitting up your body parts between four different workouts each week, generally allows us to do less in each workout as compared to if you were doing three days a week. So if you're doing a four day a week split, it should still be the same volume weekly that you would be doing in a three day. It's just now each workout's a little shorter because you're spreading the things out over four days. Okay. My first curiosity is that you might be doing big workouts four times a week. Yeah. And that's just a little bit more than what your body has been trained to do thus far. You're just not there yet. That's the first thing I'm curious about. But when it comes to should I be doing three or four, here are my rules of thumb. Number one, you've got to be doing at least two days a week of strength training. Um, and even then, it's hard to progress. Two days a week is going to help everyone and you're going to maintain. Three days a week is where we start to see progress happen. So if you are someone like Sheila that wants to get better, that wants progress, you've got to be doing at least three days a week. And four days a week is for you if you like shorter workouts or you're a bit more advanced and your body can handle full, big four workouts. In this scenario, three to four days a week, you do want to be doing what Sheila referred to is a split body part routine. So just like you said, Sheila, you said I did my back. I know you did chest, shoulders, and triceps, right? Mm -hmm. Today. Beautiful. That is a great kind of like what we call a common, um, a common split routine. It would be chest, shoulders, tries, legs, back, thighs, right? So you would do legs, back, and biceps, chest, shoulders, triceps. That's your whole body. Now you could do chest, shoulders, triceps. And like you said, you're doing legs twice a day. So maybe it's, you could do legs and shoulders twice, a, sorry, twice a week, <laughs> legs twice a week. In general, I like people to do legs twice a week and back twice a week, chest, shoulders, biceps, triceps one time per week. How you put those together is the art and science, but a legs, back, shoulders, chest, actually, yeah, you could do legs, let's go legs, back, and abs, chest, shoulders, triceps, legs, back, and shoulders would be three days, three days a week, okay? So as long as you're splitting it up, generally, I want two workouts per week on the legs, two for the back, maybe you could hit your other muscle groups, shoulders, buys and tries twice per week. But if you're doing all your major muscle groups, all of them two times per week, that's probably one of the reasons why you're sore. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that. Let's start with your volume. And then we're going to look at slowing your roll. And then we're going to look at nutrition. Okay. So when we talk about like how many times a week are you doing chest, shoulders, triceps? What? Beautiful. And you're doing legs twice a week. And on that day, are you only doing legs? Or are you doing like legs and abs or legs, legs and back? back? Beautiful. Yeah. Legs and abs. And then you're probably doing legs and back one day. I, no, I do. I, I just do legs one day. And then okay. legs and back one. Or I'm sorry. Legs and abs one day. Yep. And then back, biceps, and then yep. throw some abs or yep. shoulders. Like that. Perfect. So how many times a week are you doing legs? Twice. You are. Okay, beautiful. So it, it actually sounds like your split is pretty good. You've got a great split because you're hitting legs twice a week. 
you're getting your back, you could consider adding a second day for back somewhere in there, but you're hitting all of your major muscle groups. So without getting too detailed here, it sounds like your split is good. So I'm not too worried that's the problem. Like if you told me you were doing legs every single day, I would know that's the problem. Your split sounds pretty good. So let's go on to your intensity. Um, as you said, I have a hard time not really pushing myself and I'm feeling sore all the time. So soreness, since we took one of the things out of the consideration, what I find is soreness usually comes from two places. I mean, it can come from more than that, but let me give you three. One is that the workout is too intense and that's probably what's going on for you. Number two, the wrong nutrition around your workout. And number three is just new activity. So if you go to the gym tomorrow and you do walking lunges for the first time, you're going to be sore, even if your nutrition is good and even if you're not doing it at high intensity. OK, so newness of exercise causes soreness. We're going to rule that out because you've been doing this consistently, it sounds like. So Except now your five minutes of walking lunges killed me. <laughs> yeah. If you went from zero to five minutes, you would be you would be so sore. Absolutely. And again, there, too, I want you to gradually work it up. Right. right? So already I can tell just from spending some time with you, Sheila, and those of you guys that are watching my hunch is the reason why she's sore is she's a go getter. You're an achiever and you're you're really tackling your yeah. workouts. And it sounds like you're going into those workouts and you're really pushing it, right. which is awesome. But if you're sore all the time, you're pushing it a little bit too much. Yeah. So I would tell you to pull back a little less enthusiasm, maybe a little less weight load, maybe just a little less oomph in your workouts. Just kind of chill a little in your workouts. Slow so down. When in you your do workout. less weight, do you do more reps? Well, that's where it gets tricky. I don't know if you're wanting to get stronger and build muscle. I wouldn't necessarily tell you to go lighter. I would tell you to find the heavy weight load that isn't quite so taxing. Okay. So I don't know. Were you able to hear my last conversation with Petey? Did you hear that? I, I just got caught the tail end of it. I'll go back okay. and listen to it. Okay. So ultimately in any exercise, you only want the last two reps to be sloppy and hard. Okay. So if your whole set is like you're struggling and straining for an entire set, we got to drop the weight load, okay. but you don't have to increase your reps. Your reps should be perfect except for the last two or the last three. So if you're doing 12 repetitions in an exercise, reps nine and 10 should feel pretty good. They should almost be kind of easy, but there should be an increasing intensity so that when you get to 11 and 12, it's like I was losing my technique and it was definitely hard and I could not do 13 reps. That's like the perfect goal or the same applies for 10 reps. If you're doing 10 reps, it would be rep number nine and 10 rather than struggling the whole set. So my hunch is you might be using really heavy weight loads where you're struggling from the second or the third rep. Is that accurate? It is. Absolutely. Yeah. So what I would recommend is cut back on your weight a little, but don't reduce your reps. Okay. Keep, or don't increase your reps. Keep your reps where they are. Just pull back on your weight load a little bit so that let's say reps one to eight are doable. You've got gorgeous, perfect technique for the first eight reps. Then you're struggling. Then you're starting to lose your tech technique, but you're only losing your technique for the last two, maybe three reps. Got it. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. So the more advanced you get with your strength training, the more it's going to look like this. How many reps are you doing generally? 12. Okay. So generally what it's going to look like the more advanced you get is reps one and two are good. Rep, rep number three, you start to feel it. Rep number four, you start to work. Rep number five, you're working. Number six, you're working more. Seven, you're starting to lose your technique. 
Eight, you're losing your technique a little more. Nine and 10. And when you get to 11 and 12, it's like I could not do 13 and I'm losing my technique. So it can be gradual throughout that whole set. Okay. But the last two reps are really the only reps that should be sloppy. Okay. And they should be a little sloppy. So that's my first hunch with you is cut back on your weight load a little, but keep your reps the same. And then the last thing is, it's really important that you're eating a combination of protein and carbs before and or after. Okay. Do not work out empty. Do not only have protein after. Okay. Go into a workout fueled, not to be full, but fueled, no fasted workouts. And then after your workout, a post-workout refuel that's a combination of protein and carbs. That makes a big impact in okay. reducing soreness. Okay. I do Is that tend helpful? Because it's early. <laughs> yeah. And that's a big one. Is that is that helpful? Does that kind of give you some Yes, absolutely. In totally. Terms of maybe. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Good. Any questions? Um, other than, you know, the whole macronutrient, that's a hard one, Holly. That's so yeah. that's a hard one. It I'm is. trying and should I be eat trying to strive to eat that way to get stronger? Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Did you download my macros 101 guide? I did. Beautiful. Yes. Let that be your Bible. It will help everything. It's going to help reduce soreness. It's going to help you maximize muscle growth. It's also going to improve blood sugar stabilization to control hunger and energy. You'll get better workouts. So balance your macronutrients before your workout, as well as your post-workout refuel. Okay. Okay. And that definitely is a work in progress. Yeah. So hopefully you'll join us again here for another one yes. of these segments. And then we'll talk about nutrition. How does that okay. sound? That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for your I time. Love it. You're so welcome. I'm so glad you were here. Okay. Have a Keep great day. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Hi. How are you? Good morning, Holly. How are you? I'm good. I figured you were probably over there like, wait a second, when is she going to bring me in? I'm three minutes late. You know, <laughs> no, it's like fine. It it's fine. So glad to have you here. Welcome. How are you today? I'm awake. Okay. What time is it where you are? It's actually uh, 1030, uh, 1048 here. Okay, perfect. You're on the, the West Coast then? I am on the West Coast. Yes. Where um, are you? California. I'm actually in Long Beach. I can look out and, oh. and see the shipping lanes. So all the oh. stuff you see about in the news, I get to see it here first. That's so cool. That is like, so it really is legit. Like it's actually what we're hearing is actually happening. Actually, it's it's better now that it was, but before Christmas, I could walk out across the street and see a uh, count literally over 30 ships just anchored out there waiting to come in because wow. they just, they didn't have enough workers. So many people were out sick. It was crazy. That's amazing. That's crazy. You know, it's, it's funny because as you know, I'm normally headquartered out of Los Angeles right now. I'm in Pennsylvania. And of course it's all over the news. And part of me is like, I wonder what port in LA they're talking about. And I'm sure they're talking about Long Beach. Um, but it's, yeah. it's, cool to hear from people actually on the ground who's seeing it happening. So I've never seen that many ships at anchor just lined out beyond the breakwater before. And we've lived here uh, 16 years. So wow. it's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely unprecedented times that we are in for sure. Yeah. So I'm so glad you're here. Okay. Let's talk. So um, I remember from your application what you're curious about is finding the right kind of plan that is sustainable where you're able to lose weight, but also increase your lean muscle mass. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I am a writer. This is my my happy place. I've got my Lord of the Rings map on the wall <laughs> over I here. Love it. Um, my husband is a surfer and I really would like to spend more time in the water with him. My upper body strength is <laughs> it's negligible. Um, and um, while I'm okay carrying, you know, 40 pound box from Costco, you know, the 10 feet from my car into the house beyond that, I'm just like, forget it. Um, and 
my my um, lower body strength is is uh, I would like to get the muscles there working so that my weight can go down. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm about the same weight as I was when we got married 16 years ago. Amazing. And that was almost my highest weight ever. Oh, I don't okay. feel healthy. Okay. And my goal is to feel healthy and to be strong enough to get out there and go surfing with my Oh, husband. it sounds like to me, like goal number one is to be healthy. Goal number yeah. two is to be more fit and to be stronger. And then down the road, if there's some weight loss, some fat release, that's a goal too, but it's not your number one goal. Yeah. It's right? not my number one thing. Wonderful. Because when I find when women approach it exactly that way, number one, to be healthy, number two, to get more fit. Mm-hmm. If you approach it that way, it automatically becomes more sustainable. And, yeah. and I know that's part of your goal is for it to be something that you'll do on a consistent basis. Yeah. The last two years of sheltering in place, being more in my house than I normally am, um, has contributed to that, yeah. to where I'm at now. And just, for this, sure. this is not sustainable. I cannot right. sustain where I'm at and feel yeah. like a whole and healthy person. Yeah. I so hear you. So let me ask you, have you been successful in terms of being consistent with any kind of workout in the past six months? Where are you currently with your workout? In the past six months, right now, what's working for me is getting up in the morning and going walking. Great. Um, I do have a couple of your plans. My sister is a huge fan of yours, which is how I found you a couple of years. I want to say the the year the pandemic started actually. And I was working um, your day one and day two for a while and it just got shuffled to the side. So the last six months I have picked up my weights on and off, but I haven't found something that works yet. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I spend so much time in the chair and my workout space is, in your living what room. I have yeah. there, I have to shove the yep. coffee table out of the way and, yep. and that's it. So let me ask you this. Limited. What is outside of knowing what to do? What do you think, like in your heart and soul, what's keeping you from being consistent? It's a good question. I think for me, what's keeping me from being consistent that's a good question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> One of the things take you have a to stab at it. Take a stab and be honest with me and yourself. Take a stab at it. What do you think really and truly, no judging, what do you think is keeping you from being consistent? Um, consistency for me, part of it is not being totally committed, to be honest. Okay. Um, And the other part is feeling I am one of those people who, unless I know exactly what I'm doing, I can feel overwhelmed by the need to, like the overachiever that, um, that, that we were just talking about with your, your previous conversation. I'm going, yep. mm -hmm." And if I know exactly what I need to do, then I'm going to go for it and hit. But when I feel like there's so many options out there. I just feel overwhelmed by the pressure to get it all right. I so get it. And so, so it doesn't, doesn't it. happen. Even, the the procrastination happens because of the pressure too. Right. And it's almost like it's not even procrastination, really. No. It's, it, more, it's more along the lines of you don't know what to, you don't feel confident in what you're doing. And yeah. that's why I asked this question because- Forgive yourself for any judgments because that's a great reason to not be consistent, to not feel confident in what you're doing is why I'm in business. A lot of women feel the way that you do, where it's like, I want to do it. I know I'd be consistent, but I don't feel confident in, am I doing the right thing? Just like Sheila asked, am I doing, should I be doing four days a week? Should I be doing a body part split? I think it's inherent to us as women, um, you know, to, to need to feel confident that we're doing the right thing. Once you feel confident about that, it's a whole lot easier to be con- consistent. It's a whole different ball it. game. Yeah. I think, it, I think it's also picking the time of day. It's one of those things where you have just enough information to be dangerous. Mm-hmm. So you, you hear a little bit from one person about this thing works for them, another thing works for them, and you're going, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how much of that is me and how much of that isn't me. So figuring out a a a set time that works for me. I get up in the morning, I'm going to take my thyroid medication and then I'm going to go take my walk. Um, 
if I'm getting up and moving. Sometimes that walk moves to later in the day when I have mm-hmm. had too much thrown at me first thing in the morning, dealing mm-hmm. with stuff going on with my husband or other things, other meeting calls. Um, so figuring out how to maintain, okay, well, if I didn't get to do it in the morning, then I'm going to have to shift it to the afternoon. What can I do that, like I was listening to you talk to Sheila, just about doing four days a week and doing smaller and not spending so much time on it. And I went, that is something I could do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That is a lot less pressure. And it's amazing how much of, of it is mental pressure that we get from inside ourselves, but also from the expectations we think that our culture has for us. It's crazy. Well, yeah. And the headlines are constantly telling you how to do it, right? They're like, mm-hmm. do it this way, do it that way, the best this, the best that. So you do get bombarded with a lot of information. So mm-hmm. I know a lot of women can relate. And I'll be honest with you, I can completely relate with you. Every single day of my life is completely different. There is no consistency in my life. Right now, for I don't know why. In years past, I was a lot more consistent. I'm not. So what I would actually recommend, and this might surprise you, I would encourage you, let go of the rules. So let go of, I have to get up and work out in the morning. All right? Now, if getting up in the morning works works on Monday, you do it. But it might not work on Tuesday. So instead of having the focus be, I'm going to get up. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to take my thyroid medication and I'm going to walk and I'm going to stay consistent. Instead of that, what I would invite you to do, grab a piece of paper on your piece of paper. Maybe let's do it together right now because this is going to be helpful for everybody. All right. This is one of my favorite <laughs> I exercises. Am that person. <laughs> yeah. You guys, I have not done this exercise. I did this exercise years ago. I did a live event in San Diego for Women's Strength Nation. And I took a whole group of people through this exercise and it was amazing. We're doing it together. If what Laurel is sharing today lands for you, grab a piece of paper, nice, clean piece of paper. All right. Right now, I want you to ask yourself, no judgments. No one's telling you what to do. Take a look at the picture of your life. Okay. Just kind of quickly take a picture of, take a look at the picture of your life. Do you have kids? Do you have a job? Do you have loved ones in your family that need you? Do you run around? Take a quick snapshot of your life. Ask yourself, honestly, how many sessions per week realistically can I do at a minimum? not a maximum. I don't want you to say I could realistically do 10. I want you to start with the minimum effective dose. So it might be, I know I could do three sessions per week. And I want you to write that down and let's put them down as, how should we do this? I've done, how did I do it in the past? Let's do them as squares down your paper. Okay. So let's go like this. However many sessions, you just put them in squares down the paper. Okay. Maybe for you, it's five. Maybe for you, it's 12. Don't think days. I want you to think sessions. Okay. How many little chunks of time realistically can I put into the week without overdoing it, without overstretching myself? Kind of the minimum effective dose. Okay. Pick that number. So Laurel, how many did you pick? Four. Beautiful. I love it. Three to four is a great place to start because if you start with too many, it's going to be harder to stick with it. I love it. Now, Laurel, at the top of each of those boxes, I want you to put a number of minutes. Realistically, for each of those four, I want you to designate a number of minutes to each one of them. Maybe one of them is 20. Maybe one of them is 60. Maybe one of them is 15. They can all be different. I want you to just be like, Mondays, I bet I could do 30 minutes. Wednesdays or, you know, midweek, I could probably do 20. Over the weekend, I bet I could do a 60 minute. And I want you to just put minutes to each of them. Okay. Let me know when you're done. Perfect. Okay. Now, of those four blocks, I always want everyone doing at least two of them strength exercises. So in two of those blocks, I want you to write down in the inside that block, write down strength. And it could be any, if, if it's a 20 minute, if it's a 60 minute, it doesn't matter. Put strength in two of those blocks. 
okay? Then in two of those blocks, I want you to add cardio. Then if you're someone who has a favorite activity, like I love yoga. I have to do yoga once a week. It makes my life better. I've got some clients that love spinning. I've got some, I've got clients that love Pilates or a Zumba class or a dance class. Is there an activity that you love? If not, don't worry about it. But if there's something you love to do for your soul, I want you to add that uh, to the right of those boxes. You just write to the side, right of those boxes, right? Your soul activity, something you love to do. And if you don't have one, that's cool too. You don't have to have one. I'm just giving you one if you want. Okay. So now in those blocks, you've got two cardio, you've got two strength. If somebody's watching this and you've got more than four blocks, you can add another cardio. You can add another strength. So now we're up to six or seven sessions per week, okay? Sessions per week. So Laurel's got four, two strength, two cardio. Laurel, I want you to tell me the, the number of minutes in the block and the activity. Tell me your four. Um, I've got strength for 20, cardio for 15, strength for 30, and cardio for 40. And dance for my soul activity. Beautiful. I love it. Good job. Okay. Now, strength for 20 minutes. Cardio for 15. Strength for 30. Cardio for 40. Do you know what you'll do for that cardio for 40? Is that a walk? Yeah. Okay. My draw husband and I do a, do a long, about an hour long walk every Sunday together. Perfect. But this would probably be a 45 minute one for, just for me Saturdays. Okay. So here's the thing. I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Do you do a walk every Sunday? Every Sunday. Yeah. That's a block then. You need to add either, either that Sunday is your fourth block mm -hmm. or we have to add a block because that is a session. Add a block. All right. Add a block. So now we got five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plus we've got the soul one. Now mm -hmm. we've got five sessions here. Do you truly believe you can get all those five in? And I can at least, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, maybe, I, maybe I need to, to take it down to four. And Perfect. Do Here's what we're going to do. I agree with you because I'd rather you start slower. I want you to turn your Sunday walk into that fourth block, which is the CV mm -hmm. for 40 uh, cardio. Change that mm -hmm. to however many minutes that walk is on Sundays. That fourth block mm -hmm. is your Sunday walk. Mm -hmm. And that's your Sunday walk. Doesn't matter how many minutes that's your Sunday walk. Now yeah. we've got three blocks and a soul. Mm -hmm. I want you to put that soul in as one of the, one, the other cardio, which is 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Even if you're just dancing for 15 minutes, if it's a class, you take it for 15 minutes. Doesn't matter. You're only going to do 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, you guys, I literally put music on and dance by myself over here in the studio just because it's so fun. All right. <laughs> So yep. you're going to put that down. Dance is the cardio for 15. Mm -hmm. And now all we have left are two strength training segments. And for those two strength sessions, right? Do I have it right? Yeah. Yep. For those two strength sessions, you're just going to fill that time 20 minutes with strength exercises. You can either download my free six week strength and cardio program. You can go pick mm -hmm. up a book. You can find something somebody else, somebody gives you on the internet. Mm -hmm. And you're going to fill only 20 minutes, one session, 30 minutes on a different session of strength exercises. Now, these four blocks mm -hmm. can happen anytime during the week. So if you get up on Monday and you've got 20 minutes, you do your strength. If Tuesday rolls around and you don't have time, that's okay. You've got the three blocks that you can put in later in the week. Start this way because it's the minimum effective dose that's going to help you build the habit. And if you can do this for three weeks in a row, you'll start to naturally add on to it. And you'll be consistent because this is manageable. Do you agree? 
I absolutely do. Doable. This is doable. And if you find that next week comes, comes, if, if you get through a week and you don't get all four of those, you mm-hmm. have to ask yourself two questions. Number one, did I just not choose to do these things? Did I just choose not to? Or number two, should I cut one of them out and start even more conservatively? Okay. Good question. Because a lot of times we just can't do as much as we want to do. But if we start you with smaller chunks, you're going to build the habit and then you'll find the time to keep doing it. Is that helpful? Yeah, it's absolutely. It's, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Because you look at this and you're like, I can do that. And now you feel it's manageable. You know how to do it. It's doable. No reason to get overwhelmed because this is perfect enough. Mm-hmm. You've got strength training. You've got cardio. You've got fun dance. You've got to walk with a friend. That sounds like an awesome week to me. And that's enough to get you going without overloading you and without putting you into like, you know, analysis paralysis. Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Uh-uh, I don't have an hour today. I was going to try and do it this morning, but then something came up. You just take these four little blocks. You could even put them on four different stickies and just move them around your calendar, right? Okay. It I love it. Today. I love it. I'm going to move it to Tuesday. If it doesn't happen on Tuesday, I'm going to move it to Tuesday night. If it didn't happen on Tuesday, I'm, you just keep moving it where the session can work into your life and you're going to be a lot more likely to accomplish it. You've got me actually laughing and looking forward to it, which is great. Like yeah. when I, when I found myself starting to smile, thinking about ways I could work with then I've got, yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. I have that. Yeah. That's the secret of it. And now, you know, those of you guys that are listening, please know that I'm really good at understanding people because I've been doing it for 30 years. So this exercise I just walked through with Laurel is largely because I get her. And you can see how her situation is different than Sheila's. Sheila would go for three hours every single day if she could, right? And it's just, we're different people. We have different lives. We have different demands. We have different history. This is the perfect exercise for you, Laurel, because it's doable. And it takes away all of the questions. It will work. Once you do this for three weeks or four weeks, it's going to be your new way of being. Then we can get more sophisticated or then we can add more chunks. Start with these four chunks and you're going to be successful. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Holly. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you to your team also that does all the coordinating behind the scenes. I appreciate them as well. Oh, you are so welcome. I'm so glad this was an awesome question. And I can already see Hortensia is like, that's me. I'm not consistent because I feel I'm not sure what I'm doing. So I know that your question is really going to resonate with a lot of women. So thank you for joining me and bringing your question forward. Will you keep me posted? Ping us back in three weeks and let us know how you're doing. I will ping you back in three weeks. I love it. All right. Have a good day. Okay, guys, and that is it. Thank you so much for joining me. I knew that would be such a fun session. If you're still here with me, I'm going to come back over to my comments on Facebook and just say hello to my friends that are here with me live. And if you're here with me live and you have any questions, please share or any comments in general. Heidi, Heidi, you guys, Heidi always, always brings forward the unique beverages. She is having parsley leaf tea. For the first time. And I am not so convinced that that's delicious. How does it taste? Lois, water today, no tea until I drink 64 ounces of water. Then I get tea as a reward. Lois, I love that. That's awesome. Are you going to have your lychee? What's your tea going to be when you reward yourself? Good job. Um, Elizabeth, I am trying twinings, twin twine, twinings, right? Yeah, twinings. Ooh, number 22, dark caramel. It's a black tea with caramel and golden syrup flavor, but no sugar sweeteners. Oh, that sounds amazing. I need to find that one. Um, Hollis, if you are still here, um, I'm going to uh, let me give you, hold on one second. Hollis, you guys, those of you looking for the link to download my six-week 
strength and cardio program. I'm going to give you the corrected link. It's actually hollyperkins.com forward slash offer, not free offer. I just put that link down here, hollyperkins.com forward slash offer not free offer. And that will take you to where you can sign up to get my six week strength and cardio plan. Totally free. Um, Heidi says that the parsley tea is not bad. And Lois is going to have indigo punch. I love it guys. All right. That is it for today. I'm so glad that you guys were here. If you liked this segment and you want more, let me know. And if you want to Join me here live for one of these hot tea, hot seat community coaching segments. We will have another one coming up in February. Send me an email, uh, holly at hollyperkins.com, and I will send you the link to the application. And then I will see you next week, Tuesday, one o'clock on the East Coast. I'll see you then. Have a great day.